Hello everyone, this is Blaine and uh, Bella, who I don't know, there she is. She won't leave me alone tonight. Isn't that sweet? She just, she's a very needy dog. But anyway, uh, I'm doing a review, and I've already recorded it, of uh, 20th Century Songs by Eric Faulkner. Um, I'm just going to come in here right at the beginning and say it is absolutely fantastic. I love it. These are the songs I've been waiting my whole life to hear. It's a continuation in my mind of some of the great stuff that the Bay City Rollers introduced us to. And it carries on beyond that with, with Eric's personality shining through. And uh, I'm just so happy to have it. And I'm kicking myself in the butt for not listening to it earlier. Um, but I'm coming in here right now because I cut off half of this video. Uh, because it was about a lot of stuff that uh, is, uh, let's say, politics or whatever. And that'll come out, uh, I guarantee it, in, in the not-too-distant future. Because I am kind of pissed off with <laughs> some people. That'll come out. But, um, yeah, let's focus on the music, shall we? Um, it's, it's a great set of recordings. Um, later on in this, I'm going to be playing some of them. And... Gee, I wish I could just play all of them for you and talk over top of all of them about why the songs are so good. Um, there was one, there was one song I didn't even put on there. It's called "Pop Star," which is one of my absolute favorites now. And uh, I wish I'd put it in there. There's so much I could put in from from this set of recordings. It's absolutely fantastic. I'm gonna make sure that I have a link to uh, his music in the description, and I recommend you go listen to it. Um, and I'm also stepping in here because, yeah, because I split the video up, there's there's a few things that I mentioned. I say uh, I, I'm talking about uh, the previous review I did. That was on Songbook 1, which is more of an acoustic um, set of recordings. And I highly, highly recommend those as well. And you can see my review of that. Um, but the other thing is I also talk about how um, what I was talking about leads into what I'm about to discuss. And kind of what I was talking about, I guess, is that... Um, with the Bay City Rollers, Eric was um, uh, pretty much the uh, a guiding force for the band, um, not just with songwritings, but I, I do believe also with the, um, how would you put it? Um, now is not a good, for the arrangements, I was going to say, now is not a good time to be at a loss for words, Blake, because we just want to finish this. But also with the arrangements, I think that, Eric had a large hand to play in that and it starts to shine through in all of these recordings so I hope you watch the rest of the video and listen to some of the music and then go to Bandcamp and listen to it there congratulations Eric on a wonderful career on your 70th birthday on all of the great songs that you've written and thank you very much for making my life better with all of these songs and here comes the review okay so let's get into this um collections of songs and so this kind of ties in together this absolutely ties in together because um for me these collections of songs this collection of songs is the best i've heard um after the bay city rollers that could have been um included in uh, the Bay City Rollers repertoire. So I think Eric here is really carrying, like it's just his music and it's just Eric Faulkner, don't get me wrong, but he's carrying forward with all the sounds that I that I loved uh, growing up. Um, it's a mix between this collection and, and the previous one uh, that I was mentioning. Um, the production on this is uh, a little less stable than in the previous um, it, uh, you know, you have keyboards in this, you have electric guitar, you have some acoustic and Spanish guitar, you have drum drums playing, uh, synths. And so it takes a lot more effort to get um, all the production good. But at no point in time is the production bad. And as a matter of fact, some of the more raw production actually works for it. And I was actually happy to hear it. Uh, as far as songwriting goes, I said before, you know, every song that Eric writes has an, its own individual hook. This is still true here. Um, that diversity of songs, it's all over the place. We've got uh, doo-wop, we've got glam, we've got 80s, we've got metal. Um, it's actually, it's really all over the place. Um, 
how much do I, you know, so there's, I think, 21 songs, which is a tremendous number of songs. Um, I like all of them. And I'd say I love uh, 10 to 12 of them, right? But I'm, I'm getting the feeling that I may start to like some of the other ones a lot more as I listen to it uh, more often. Because some, yeah, there, there were already some that I wasn't sure about. And then I was actually just walking today and one of them, which I thought was kind of a bit repetitive, actually just turns out to be a rocker. And you just have, you just have to hear it enough times. But anyway, what I'm going to do with this interview is that I'm going to uh, play a song and my outfit is going to change because I, like I said, I had to do this thing so many times because I was just get, I was learning more things and getting more pissed off and whatever. But um, yeah, I'm going to play a song and then come in and, and talk about it. But um, yeah, here we have uh, on this uh, Eric, I, th this is my feeling. Here's, here's what I'm going to say. I think with the rollers, I think Eric wasn't entirely himself. And you can all f try to figure out what it might be, and you can disagree with me 100%. With these recordings, I think that Eric has found himself. Because that romantic side of Eric, and I don't mean singing about love, I'm talking about guitar licks that bring out emotions in people and stuff like that. And they really seem to come back here. I really think that Eric uh, found himself and he can disagree with me <laughs> if he wants to. Um, it may be that he just found the music that I personally like, but I, I really have this feeling that um, after listening to, like just the dedication song, for example, which I know Eric wasn't fond of the song itself, like. But his guitar work on that nails the song. And it ha there's something special about his guitar licks. No one's ever, I, I haven't heard any guitar licks like that. And it starts to come back with all these recordings. So that's why I, I really love them. And if anyone's a Bay State Rollers fan that loves their songwriting and love the guitar work in there, then this is a collection for you not to be missed. So don't sit around waiting for a new Bay City Rollers record. Go to the source and listen to this music on Bandcamp and I'll put a link in. So yeah, that's enough of my talking before the music. Let's get to the music and my change of clothing. Okay, so that was 75, the first song on this EP. Um, you know, and it's kind of funny. Uh, I was thinking I would be able to um, pigeonhole each and every song and then just say, you know, it's this type of song. Uh, but isn't it funny that the first song has already stymied me and I don't know what, what, what to say uh, about it. Um, the, so... I'm going to focus on something a little bit unrelated to the song itself and just in general and a feeling that I had and the, the feeling that I had listening to this entire album or collection of songs is was like an old friend coming back to me. Um, it's just so wonderful to hear that voice, that guitar, that songwriting that I grew up with. And he's and he now he's just doing it in his own way, and he just seems so comfortable. And uh, you know, we will get to my favorite song on on this collection at some point in time in the near future. Um, th this isn't it, but it's a great way to start this collection off. You know, talking about seventy five. I mean, seventy five is, is a, an enormous year. In, in his life, uh, but I think he's referring to um, everyone else kind of around him. But anyway, uh, let, let's move on 
to the next song that I've chosen off of this uh, EP. She's head over heels on Monday A broken hearted brave on Sunday And there she goes The far back life of a grave She's probably blown on Thursday Saturday's laces to our barbie She ain't got the bed She's got a smile Uh, that was a snippet from Check Out the Babe. And again, this is just like quintessential Britpop. I, I don't know how any I don't know how anyone could miss this stuff. Uh, it is absolutely incredible. Um, I talked about how Eric understands, you know, uh, never to get too complicated, never to get too simple. And this song just sticks in that um, that perfect realm. Like, uh, so few songwriters are able to hit that. I, I think it's an innate ability. Like, I don't think it's his, I don't think it's his classical training that leads him towards this. This is a person with an ear. And, you know, and I appreciate it so much because um, everything I do on all of my instruments and even with drums and all that and, and uh, the accents that you put on everything, it comes from all of this stuff that this guy has done. And I like I, I don't I, I don't have much to say about this other than the fact that he's got some perfect hooks going on in here and his voice sounds great as well uh you know that's just my opinion we'll move on to the next song I don't know what I can say about this. What an incredible pop tune. You know, so that's Clem Burke. Um, yeah, from Blondie. Clem Burke. Clem from Blondie uh, as the percussionist on there. Wow, does this song have everything. Like, rewind and listen to it again and then come back. The harmonies are great. The melody is great. The rhythm is great. The guitar tone is fantastic. This is it. This is the this is the song for me has everything. This is the song that um, you know uh, all my life with all the music I've been listening to. I hear this and I'm like, that's the song that I wanted to hear. It is so perfect. Uh, it's perfect pop music. So yeah, it may not have some of the depth of some of the other songs on this uh, collection of music, but wow, wow, how is this not, how is this not on the radio and we all know why it's not on the radio because everything is corrupt these days <laughs> and but also there's so much competition how many thousands of people are trying to get their music on the radio you know um it's an awful awful business you know it doesn't matter how good you are you know uh, the greats the giants uh, can absolutely fail but that's okay we listen to this and we realize here is an absolute master with guitar tone, vocals, lyrics, and um, songwriting. And it's absolutely great. I'm so happy. I'm so happy to have this in my collection now. Okay, we'll move on to the next song. I don't want to, but we will.
I feel bad for cutting these songs off. You know, you're just going to have to go and buy them and listen to them. <clears throat> what do we have here? I have a lot of emotions about this song. And part of it goes back to some discussions I had when we were listening to and in the chat group for the, the Friday night uh, dedication fans remember the Bay City Rollers uh, chat group and I was talking about how when men or boys listen to the Bay City Rollers we saw it in the way of like being in love with a woman and, and following the voice and and uh, of the Bay City Rollers and understanding it from their perspective whereas women you know perhaps thought they were singing to them um, and Suze actually commented, they ruined us. And it's absolutely true. It's absolutely true. The Bay City Rollers absolutely destroyed my life. That's how fucking powerful they were. Because they set up this expectation about romance and love that is just unachievable. And that's fine. But what we have here with this song by Eric is this absolute, uh, it's, it's, it's leveling up. It's going up a, a whole other level beyond what the Rollers ever did. It, it is so incredible. It's, it's romantic. It's, uh, you know, it's heartfelt. Um, you know, uh, we're starting to understand when we get to hear stuff like this, what was going on with that band you know the guy's a romantic he's a romantic and it's great for us you know it's improved our lives and it's destroyed us at the same time both men and women and what an absolute power that is nobody else has achieved that you know and uh you know in popular music recently and in, in my mind anyway no one has achieved that you know, compare it to like uh, all the cock rock <laughs> that came out. Um, they don't even compare because they're not putting themselves out there. That's that's what it is. The rollers were putting themselves out there. Eric's putting himself out there. He's singing stuff that is heartfelt and passionate. And people don't respect that because people are weak. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just being insulting now. But my God. My God, what a great song. And it, and it shows how much of that was making its way into the Rollers' music. Congratulations. Like, uh, I wish I could write stuff like that. Oh, my God. You know, I don't care if I sold a single record. Um, so that's my, my passionate kind of review of that song. Really great. And it's it's everything we ever wanted, in my opinion. Okay, but we're going to move on to the next song. And I'm sorry, I may not even be mentioning the song names, but hopefully you can see them in the video. But when you when you go out and listen to it, you'll find it anyway. Okay, I've actually, I've absolutely skipped some songs, and and that's okay because there are so many songs on here, uh, and I've skipped ahead, um, but I've played some of some of my favorites, as uh, so everything's okay, and uh, what you just heard was Hungarian goulash, and I want to say something uh, very personal about this. So uh, there was this band. The English Dogs, which was like this straight ahead punk band back in, uh, I, don't, I don't know, I guess it was the early 80s. And I listened to them. And then uh, 
anyone that was around back then realized uh, and understood that metal crossed over with punk at at this point in time and the english dogs did like one crossover record and then they did another one called um where legend began and it was a kind of a tolkien or dungeons and dragons uh, metal kind of record and it was a good record with a lot of riffs a lot of good riffs in it and when i hear eric doing this it reminds me so much of that and uh it it just i i was i was saying oh eric could have done celtic music he could have done this the, the basic rollers could have gone in so many different directions and then i hear this and i'm like yeah the guy could have been in a metal band um you know doing the great stuff uh that the english dogs were doing back then and i don't want to insult the english dogs because i think they did a great uh job with that album like i really love that album where legend began um but I, but then i like well oh hell if eric faulkner was in there as well <laughs> This would have just like destroyed everything around it because he does such an excellent job with this song. Uh, it, it's it, it's so incredible how versatile he is as, as an instrumentalist. I mean, like there's just so... I, I'm so happy that I said they could have gone in so many directions because he can go in so many directions. Um, and and the, the amazing thing is, is that... Um, it is all about taste, right? Um, and, and I say taste in, in a few different ways. There's good taste and bad taste, right? But there's also just being tasteful in what you're doing and not trying to drill down into your audience head, you know, what you want to achieve. It's more about giving the audience what they want. Actually, this is where Eric is, is the absolute professional. You give the audience what they want to a point where they want more that is eric faulkner that's my description of eric faulkner right there he doesn't have to do 300 different notes going up and down you know he has to deliver seven notes where people say my god i want to hear more of this but then he can also do hungarian goulash and even at the end of that we're like we want more of this you know so it's uh it's very rewarding to hear this, you know, and uh, well, you know, I've, I've already said so many, so, so many good things, but uh, I've reviewed EP2 in the past. Now I'm reviewing EP5, both worth having. Um, I think EP5 answers a lot of questions about um, how Eric influenced the Bay City Rollers. And I know that Eric doesn't want to ever say, like, I've never heard him say, well, you know, I, I was driving the change and all of this other stuff, but he truly was. Um, and he was not a founder of the Bay City Rollers, but uh, I really do believe, thank goodness, he joined the band because they had producers that were writing their own stuff and then recording it with session musicians that dies off i know that I, I think there were one or two members of the band that wanted that to just continue hey just let someone else write our songs and we'll sing and we'll have hits that dies off so quick it dies off so quick you have to have someone in your band ever since the beatles anyway writing some music you have to have some character of your own Thank goodness Eric was there and he provided that character. And uh, he worked with Woody to write so many songs. And we have to thank them for that, you know. Um, but the fact is, there, this is a, a band that provided so many great songs. And Eric, you know, really i i've i've said a few times and in, in one of the videos i had to delete because of bullshit but um eric became the the band leader and and he did a great job of it it's as simple as that so anyway i hope uh i i know this is a huge long video you don't have to watch it you can complain all you want i'm not going to shorten it um 
Thank you, Eric, for everything. You know, wow. Uh, you know, the rollers changed my life. And uh, hearing hearing this music that you've recorded over the years finally um, is continuing to change my life. Isn't that isn't that fantastic? Uh, thanks for any anyone that's sat through this. I know this is a, a really long one, but it's been an emotional roller coaster of a week for a lot of people. But the simple fact is. Um, as I said before, you can go to Bandcamp and buy, I think there's four um, albums worth of music that you can buy on there right now. And uh, there's absolutely no reason not to do that if you're a Bay City Rollers fan. Eric has, has uh, produced a tremendous amount of great music. So thanks for watching. I'm really tired. I worked like so many hours. <laughs> I'm exhausted. But thanks for watching and uh, have a good night. And the weekend's coming sooner or later. Have a good weekend if you can. Thanks a lot. Bye. No, wait. <laughs> Stop. I've got one more song I'm going to play on the outro, and it is called I Will Return. Thanks for watching and enjoy this great music.